Welcome back to another episode of Big Sticks, guys. Today, I'm going to use the Weber Rotisserie and I'm going to put it up against the pit barrel. And for those of you who own a pit barrel, you already know that that's a chicken cooking machine. But yesterday when I was walking through Costco and I, I got two chickens, I was like, what am I going to do with this? I want to cook it two different ways. And then I walked by the rotisserie machine and I said to myself, you know what, I got a Weber Rotisserie and I also have a pit barrel. So I want to see which one of the two is going to turn out the best chicken possible. All right, first things first, we're going to remove the giblets. I'm going to trim a little bit of this excess skin and fat. Let's see. I'm going to trust this chicken for rotisserie. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do this. Okay, so right around here. I'm just going to twist that over. I'm going to go underneath this leg and underneath this leg. And I'm going to pull it tight. Now, we'll twist that again. All right now, keeping this pulled tight, we'll flip the chicken over, right? And we're gonna crisscross this. And we'll go under each wing. crisscross this again and we'll flip the chicken back over I'm just gonna tie this so I'll go a double overhand surgeons knot we're gonna tie that tight to a half hitch so just a basic overhand knot there All right and we'll just trim the excess. That should do me just fine for what I'm trying to do on the rotisserie. Now I'm gonna do all my seasoning of this bird after I get it on the spit. So I'm just gonna go in right through here and come out the other side. And I wanna make sure that these Spikes here go right through the thighs and then I come right back through with the other Flip that chicken over and I'll go right through the breastbone here And then I'll tighten this down well, That should do us just fine. So I got even lengths on on both ends here, uh, where it would be on the spit. So I got no tumbling. I can actually probably adjust this a little bit further in tight, tighter. There we go. That should do even better. Yeah, that's gonna be just fine. It feels rather evenly weighted. The rotisserie should have zero issues with keeping this turning. All right, so to keep this even, I have trussed them both. I'm gonna rub them down in a little bit of olive oil just to help with skin crisping and also with help helping the rub it here. And this morning, I'm gonna be rolling with rub some chicken, breast enhancement. I hope this stuff is good. I've never tried this before. All right. We'll see how they do with their breasts enhanced. I'm gonna allow this to sit for about 30 minutes and then I'll put them out on the cookers. Okay. 
Okay, so pit barrel first. All right, going on the special little turkey hanger that you can order from pit barrel. Just gonna set that straight up in the middle and we'll let that roll. Next, the Weber rotisserie. So I don't know how long this is going to take. We're simply going to take it up to a temperature of 165 in the thigh and the and the breast meat. Same for on the on the pit barrel cooker. Whew, boy, it is a special kind of hot here in the North Bay area. It's about 92 degrees at 10 a.m. And I'm already sweating through my shirt and I haven't even done any real physical labor. Ain't that something? But anyways, folks, I cannot wait to see the results of this cook off. One, because I love chicken that comes out of the pit barrel cooker. You guys know it's a good cooker. Weber's also a good cooker. I mean, hell, what has it been around? 60 plus years with a design that hasn't changed since, so there's gotta be something good with it. But I love rotisserie chicken as well. So I honestly, I cannot wait to tear into these two chickens when they're done. So stick around, folks. It's about to get dirty. All right, so here we are, one hour mark. The bird is looking some kind of nice. Can't argue with that. I'll do that temp here in a little bit. Let's see the pit barrel. So the pit barrel has little to no color on it right now. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed in the pit barrel. We'll see where we end up. So first, the pit barrel. So first thing I'm noticing right off top is that it hasn't achieved a whole lot of even color. Even, I stress even. Now it has, it does have some color up around the breast and the, the neck area, right where it was hovering over the flame, right? But right around the legs and thighs, it doesn't appear to have much, much color or crisping. Now for the rotisserie. I think the first thing that's evident here is its coloration and the crisping of the skin. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Here we go. Let's cut off the truss. So I'm going to cut the legs and thighs off here. First thing I'm noticing is no blood. This is good. It means it's cooked all the way to the core. What does that mean? I'm gonna slice the breast off. What? Yeah. Why doesn't it actually cut butter? So that's really juicy. I don't know if you can see that. A rubber ducky. <laughs> a rubber ducky. Yeah. So there is a smoke ring, which is nice. Yes. That seasoning is good. Rub some chicken breast enhancement. Second one, pit barrel chicken. I think this the difference is obvious uh, in terms of the color. 
The rotisserie definitely came out to be a more appealing looking chicken. But hey, I've done chickens on the pit barrel before and they've turned out fantastic, irregardless of how it looked. So, another thing right off the top. You're going to have to come over here. Right off the top, I notice, is that the skin is not crispy. It's, it's rather jiggly still. And the string has a lot of crust. <laughs> so, we're going to cut off. The arm. <laughs> We're gonna cut off the leg. Oh, not Very the juicy. Leg. Set this aside here. Oh, we'll cut off the other one. Okay. So again, same thing as the rotisserie. No blood. A lot of juice though. Let's cut off the breast here on one side. This could have stood to rest another five minutes or so. So very moist breast, cooked all the way through. But again, the the skin is awfully flimsy. I mean, it's cut through for sure, which means it's bite through. It's completely rendered out all of its fat. I love you too. All right, so we're gonna taste the uh, pit barrel chicken. So that one right off top again is super smoky. It doesn't have the appearance that you would like, like the rotisserie where it's nice and crispy and brown on the outside. But in terms of its juiciness, tenderness, and its, its flavor profile, head and shoulders above the rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie chicken is good. Like, it's a winner too, but Pit Barrel has got it all together. So this rubs some chicken. I'm not blown away by it. I'm not wowed by it in any way. It's a good, it's a good, decent rub. I think anybody can make this. Just tastes like poultry seasoning, if you ask me. Well, that's gonna do it for me, folks. I hope you enjoyed this cook. I know I learned something. I hope you did too. I learned once again not to, not to put anything past the pit barrel. The pit barrel puts out a premium product each and every last time. I thought the rotisserie was gonna take it this time just because of the way it looked on the outside. But once again, you learn in life that's what's on the inside that matters, and that flavor is just hard to get by. Now, I've reached my first major milestone on YouTube. I wanna thank each and every last one of you for helping me get to 1,000 subscribers. It's not a lot, but hey, it's something, and I do appreciate it. And once again, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. And from my kitchen to yours, Big Sticks out.